This is video two of oil pastel techniques. Our first video, we learned layering, layered values, sgraffito, oil, um, two color blending, and then light on dark. And for this video, I wanna teach you etching, stippling, and impressionistic. And we'll be using color combos like in the first video that are close in relationship to each other. So choose monochromatic, um, choose analogous colors really. I mean, monochromatic would be great for some, but I think analogous colors would be overall um, the best benefit because those colors go well together. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, starting with etching, I am using the end of my paintbrush like I did with the Sgraffito technique. And what I'm going to do is just draw. I'm just drawing. Okay. I'm pressing down on that paper and you can see that it is creating little lines on there. Okay, so then I take that idea and I just go over it lightly and then you can see your etched design on there. So that would be a good way to, if you wanted to work with line to create movement or something like that, to where you have an etched in area of interest, like a focal point, um, a textured area is really cool. That would be a really cool thing to do. Okay, so the oil pastel stays on the top portion and just doesn't get in. I'm not pressing down really hard. If I did press down really, really hard, obviously, I'm pressing down pretty hard right now. See, I can cover up the whole thing. But if I lightly go over it like this, then it doesn't go down in the grooves. So that's the idea with etching. Um, for stippling, it is similar to um, pointillism. So I'm using some colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. So these would be analogous, yellow, yellow, green, and green. Um, I would check, I have a paper towel here. I would check the end here of your oil pastels and clean off. It looks like there was some orange on there. So I'm going to clean that off so that they don't muddy. My colors don't get muddied with the stippling. Okay. Just clean those off first. And then it doesn't matter when you're doing stippling. It really doesn't matter if you start with the lighter or the darker first. Um, but the idea is to just take your dots and start blending them. So I'll just do a small little area right here of yellow, and then I can go to my yellow green next. And I'm just gonna start filling in the empty spaces. So remember, stippling is similar to pointillism. Okay. And the dots up close are going to look kind of messy. I mean, you can almost almost see the messiness up close, but then far away they start to blend and mix a little bit. You can also do red and blue and up close, they'll look a little messy. And then far away, the red and blue mix together and make purple. And that's what Pointillism was all about. It was color blending and mixing. So those artists knew a lot about color theory. I'm just going in and I'm just filling in all the white places. But there's a really pretty, I think it's pretty when the colors start to blend and smear and mix a little bit. And you'll see that when we do impressionistic next. But you can definitely, this almost looks like a grove of trees. You could have 
you know, you could have your trunk coming down here and your trees would have a lot of leaves that are different colors like that. That's interesting. So that is how you do stippling. For impressionistic, it's very similar. So kind of like um, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. different shades of blue because they are all, I mean, you could, could do these shades. You've got a purple and a couple different blues. And with Impressionistic, it's strokes of color. Instead of the dots, like stippling, pointillism, instead of the dots, these are little strokes of color that overlap and mingle kind of like weaved together a little bit and they're just mingled in and I'll show you it's fun to go over it with a white once you get your colors really really mixed in there depending on how much of the purple you want and how much of the blue um, you can add more of one color than the other if you want it to be more blue, but this could be a pretty water. Um, this reminds me of Claude Monet's Lily Pond. And how he would go about mixing and blending some of his colors in there. So there's a good base of some colors and they're all kind of overlapping. Some of those lighter purples with the darker or creating darker, some some deep darker areas, you can see those in here. Um, and then if you go in with white, and see I've got some orange there, so I definitely need to clean that off because you don't want to get that dirty. Um, you'll end up with some funky colors in there. But if you go over it with some white like this, you get that really pretty toned down. And I'm just I'm just going across with horizontally with my strokes. Your strokes need to stay um, horizontal. Since I started horizontal, I need to stay horizontal. What I don't want to do, I don't want to come in and go this way. You see how that can ruin it? So make sure you're not doing this. That's ruining it. So you just want to stay horizontal but that is really a great way to make some really pretty water um, or just some just some overall blending in your artwork and you really don't have to go over it with your finger um, notice that with these three techniques I didn't do any finger blending at all there was no finger blending with impressionistic I didn't do any finger blending with stippling, and I didn't do any of the finger blending with etching, so it's not needed. But see how pretty that turns out?